Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Scorpion Swamp by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 14 and I was about to decide um, whether to leave the clearing and let the giant scorpion feast on the dwarf um, and turn to 88, um, or to um, attack the giant scorpion and turn to 312. Um, we're going to leave the clearing while the monster feasts on the, on the dwarf and turn to 88. Okay, uh, you leave the clearing. If you go north, turn to 121. If you go east, turn to 331. Um, we are going to go north and turn to 121. You find yourself at a crossing of paths. Which way will you go? North, turn to 170. South, turn to 14. Um, east, turn to 275. Or west, turn to 218. We're going to go west and turn to 218. The path widens in uh, I'll start again. The path widens into another clearing. You are in clearing 15. Uh, you see that there is one other path leading out. Then off to the side you see a dim glow. It is a ball of dancing light or willow the wisp. Um, it hovers at the western edge of the clearing and then moves back a few yards. You can now see what may be another path somewhat murky and overgrown uh, where the willow the wisp is dancing. It seems to want to show you something. Um, will you follow it or go on? Uh, every time I say Willow the Wisp, I keep thinking of um, Willow Wisp from Wonder Boy Through the Dragon's Trap. I want to say that, so I have to force myself to say the uh, the um, in Willow the Wisp. Anyway, um, follow it to the west, turn to 72. Ignore it and go south, turn to 336. Or ignore it and go east, turn to 121. We're going to ignore it and go south. So turn to 336. You are in a particularly marshy area. The ground squishes under your feet. The path bends slightly and runs alongside a large pool. Uh, you can see that there is one other exit from this clearing. You are in clearing 28. If you have been here before, turn to 137. If you have not been here before, keep reading. The surface of the pool ripples nastily and green slime coats the water. Yeah, you would never drink out of this pool, you are sure. Suddenly the scum on top of the pool seems to pull together. To your amazement, it heaves itself out of the water and onto the path, blocking your way. It is a vicious lump of slime, two yards wide, which gives off a fetid odour as it oozes slowly towards you. Will you run away, turn to 85, try to jump over it, turn to 257, attack it, or rather attack with your sword, turn to 171, or use a magic spell and turn to 400. Now the 400 is interesting there, because normally in, in these books 400 is is the last paragraph of an adventure, but obviously not in this case. Um, so yeah, we are going to cast uh, an ice spell. So we're going to turn to 400. I'm going to freeze it. Which spell will you try against the slime? Fire, turn to 188. Wither, turn to 380. Um, ice, turn to 282. Or none of these, turn to 336 and choose again. Uh, we're going to choose ice. Let's use up an ice spell. So we've used two now. So we only have a fire and two stamina spells left now. Um, and then let's turn to 282. Uh, so yeah, uh, 400 is not the last paragraph of the adventure, of course, because we've already completed the book, so we knew that already, but I find that quite interesting. Um, you cast the ice spell on the slime. Instantly, you know you made the right choice. The slime is a creature of water, and the spell freezes it solid. It is dead. Turn to 38. The slime is dead. Its remains melt and putrefy while you are wa while, while you are watching. Try saying that a hundred times in a row, or at least three times in a row. The smell is unbearable. Turn to 153. Uh, uh, that was a filler paragraph, really, wasn't it? To make uh, to make it so it goes up to 400 in total. You leave the clearing as quickly as possible. If you go north, turn to 218. If you go west, turn to 65. Um, we're going to go west and turn to 65. 
Uh, the trail winds about, but you keep to it faithfully. Skirting a great shelf fungus and the tiny creatures dining on it, you approach another clearing. This is clearing 10. If you have been here before, 10 to 343. If you have not been here before, keep reading. You can hear the sound of voices ahead of you. Cautiously, you peer around a tree. You see a group of five men. You guess they are brigands from their dress and rough speech. The brass ring is not warm, so you know that these men are not really evil. On the other hand, there is no need to be foolish. Will you turn around and go back the way you came? Turn to 137. Charge out at them, shouting and waving your sword? Turn to 231. Cast a spell from your hiding place? Turn to 287. Or step out confidently and greet them? Turn to 163. Uh, we're going to step out and confidently, or rather step out confidently and greet them. So we're going to turn to 163. You stride along the path and into the clearing. They are surprised to see you and even more surprised when you hail them casually and keep on walking. Where do you think you're going? they ask. North, you reply. They are impressed by your coolness. Uh, the brigands are accustomed to demanding payment from passers-by, but they are not murderers. Although they could attack you, the odds would be five to one. They do not feel that would be very sporting. Finally, the leader suggests a solution. Uh, you and he will fight. The first one to hit the other will be, uh, will be declared the winner. If the brigand leader draws the first blood, you must give him something of value. If you draw first blood, he and his men will let you go. If you agree to this plan, turn to 79. If you will not agree, turn to 353. Okay, we will agree to this plan, and turn to 79. There's the brigand uh, leader. He looks like a, like a cad, if you know what that is. If you don't, look it up and you'll see that he looks like one. Anyway, um, you agree that a single combat, fought to first blood only, would be an honourable way to settle the question. You and the brigand leader square off. The other men crowd around you, but they do not seem treacherous, merely excited. Brigand leader, skill 9, stamina 10. You fight only until one of you hits the other. If you hit the brigand leader first, turn to 360. If he hits you first, turn to 128. Okay. Um, skill 9, stamina 10. Let's do this. Right. Oh, this is the third creature I've fought now. I only fought one in the, in the good quest. Okay, skill 9. And stamina... Oh, forgot to put a thing there, didn't I? That makes all the difference. And stamina, 10. So, he goes for... Well, I roll for him first. So, uh, two dice, um, two d6s. And he gets a 4, that's 13. I get a 9, that's 19. Oh, no, wait a minute, I've lost skill, haven't I? Well, he definitely gets 13, so I'll put his down now. What do I get? I'm down to 8, so I get 8 plus 9, which is 17, so I still win. Good. So 17. Right, I win the attack round. Uh, that means um, I hit the brigand leader first, turn to 360. Well struck, cries the... Uh, I'll start again. Well struck, cries the brigand leader, clutching his arm where your blade nicked him. Uh, that was a good fight. One of his companions binds up his wound while another offers you water from his own flask. You all laugh and joke as though you are old friends. Send to 214. Now that the brigands are well disposed towards you, you ask them where you are. They tell you that the town of Willowbend is only a little way to the north. Uh, they add that, of the three inns in town, the bent spear is by far the best, and that you can trust the, inn, uh, the innkeeper. You say goodbye to the brigands and leave. 10-19. to 19. Okay, so, write down Brent Spear. That's what it's called. So Brent Spear in Willow Bend. There we go. Um,
OK, turn to 19. There are two paths leading out of the clearing. The northern one is much wider and more distinct, as though many had travelled along it. Will you go north, turn to 280, or east, turn to 237? Uh, we're going to go north, and turn to 280. You follow the path northward. Um, gradually, it becomes wider and the swamps less dismal. The marsh slowly turns into forest, and before long, you see a sign ahead of you. This way to Willow Bend. If you have been to Willow Bend before, turn to 355. If you have not been here before, keep on reading. A few minutes later, you hear human voices and meet a party of foresters. You walk with them to the town of Willow Bend. After your adventures, uh, you only want to find an inn and get a good night's sleep. The foresters tell you that there are three inns in Willow Bend. Um, will you go to the Black Bear, turn to 395, the Brent Spear? Why did I say Brent Spear? It's Bent Spear. Unbelievable. That made me think of Brent Spiner, who played Data on Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, anyway, uh, the Bent Spear, turn to 78 or Tancred's Flying Horse, turn to 289. Uh, we're going to go to the Bent Spear, of course, um, and we've made it to Willow Bend, of course, that's where we wanted to go, where Poomchucker wanted us to uh, reach. Anyway, turn to 78. Brent Spear. <laughs> the Bent Spear is a pleasant, roomy inn. You pay the innkeeper a gold piece and go to your room. Again, I don't know how much gold I have, or whatever. So I'll just accept that. As soon as, you, uh, as soon as your head hits the pillow, you fall asleep. You wake up the next morning feeling refreshed. Regain two stamina points. It's already at maximum. Uh, when you are about to leave, the innkeeper hails you. He knows that you came through Scorpion Swamp and that you, are, and that you intend to return the same way. You must be a mighty fighter to have come through the swamp, he says. And perhaps this is none of my business, but there is a wizard in the next street who might be able to sell you some spells to help you get back. Thanking the innkeeper for his kind suggestion, you ask for directions to the wizard and leave. If you visit the wizard, turn to 150. If you strike off south across the swamp again, turn to 343. Okay, we're going to visit the wizard. Um, so, let's go to 150. <clears throat> uh, the street leading to the edge of town is full of little shops, and one sign catches your eye instantly. Halekar, Halekar dealer in potions and spells. Um, you go in. Halakar proves to be a pleasant young man. He is a neutral wizard and can sell only neutral spells. You do not have enough gold pieces to deal with him, but some of the items that you, that you picked up in the swamp will interest him. You lay them on his table. Each of the following, if you have it, can be exchanged for one magical gem containing a neutral spell. A violet jewel, a gold chain, any of the silver amulets from the masters, a golden magnet, or the horn of a unicorn. Halakar can sell you no more than three spells. Decide which spells you want, list them on your adventure sheet, and mark off the items you traded for them. Then you leave the shop going south, back into Scorpion Swamp, turn to 343. Okay, we're going to trade... Um, let's have a look at what we have. Um, golden Magnet Pendant and Unicorn Horn. Okay, so I'm going to trade these two things, because I have them. And I'm going to trade them for another Stamina Spell and another Fire Spell. So we now have times two of these. We now have times three of these. <coughs> Excuse me. So... <coughs> We now ha uh, don't have the Golden Magnet Pendant anymore, and we don't have the Unicorn Horn anymore, and we've traded it for, and we've traded them for a Fire Gem and a Unicorn Horn. Um, anyway, and now we're going to uh, head south, so turn to 343. 
Uh, you see that you are approaching the spot where you first met the brigands. If you parted from them in friendship, turn to 199. If you fled from them, tricked them, or killed some of them, turn to 301. Okay, we part. <coughs> we parted them in friendship, so 199. There are two brigands resting in the clearing, which seems to be their meeting place. Recognizing you, they smile and wave. You call a greeting and pass by. Turn to 19. <clears throat> there are two paths leading out of the clearing. The northern one is much wider and more distinct, as though many had travelled along it. Will you go north, turn to 280, or east, turn to 137? Okay, we're going to go east and turn to 137. Brent Spear. I just can't get over that. I can't even read now. Alright, this is the place where you met the slime. If you if you killed it, go to 153. If you did not kill it, it blocks your path as before, and any damage you did to it has been healed. Turn back to 336 and decide how you will deal with it. Okay, we did kill it, so turn to 153. Uh, you leave the clearing as quickly as possible. If you go north, turn to 218. If you go west, turn to 60, uh, 65. Okay, we're going to go north, turn to 218. The path widens into another clearing. You are in clearing 15. You see that there is one other path leading out, then off to the side you see a dim glow. It is a ball of dancing light, or willow the wisp. It hovers at the western edge of the clearing, and then moves back a few yards. You can now see what may be another path, somewhat murky and overgrown, where the willow the wisp is dancing. It seems to want to show you something. Will you follow it or go on? Follow it to the west, turn to 72, ignore it and go south, turn to 336, or ignore it and go east, turn to 121. We're going to ignore it and go east and turn to 121. <coughs> okay, you find yourself at a crossing of paths. Which way will you go? North, turn to 170, south, turn to 14, east, turn to 275, or west, turn to 218. Uh, we're going to go south, um, so let's turn to 14. Okay. Um, the trail takes you to a small open spot where years ago a great tree fell and dragged down several others. This, this is clearing 32. Uh, if you have been here before, turn to 338. Okay, so... <coughs> so... Uh, Wait a minute, yeah, so we want to go to 338 because we've been here before, haven't we? So 338. Um, you recognise the clearing uh, where you met the scorpion and the dwarf. There's nothing left now but a few scraps of bone and leather armour. Turn to 88. Surprised the scorpion didn't eat the leather armour. Um, if you, leave the clear, uh, you leave the clearing. If you go north, turn to 121. If you go east, turn to 331. Okay, we're going to go east and turn to 331. You are back in the clearing where the great eagle nested. All you see is the old tree in the nest. If you fought the eagle, turn to 202. If you did not fight the eagle, turn to 112. Okay, we did not fight the eagle, so turn to 112. You are curious about the great nest. If you would like to climb up and examine it, turn to 73. If you'd rather leave, turn to 202. Uh, we're going to leave and turn to 202. I'm not that curious. You have no reason to linger. You have a choice of three paths. Would you travel south, turn to 138, east, turn to 41, or west, turn to 14? Uh, we're going to go south and turn to 138. Ahead of you there is an opening in the trees. You investigate. You are in clearing 35. You can see the wide, foul-brewed river running east and west. A great stone bridge crosses the river. It looks totally deserted. If you go onto the bridge, turn to 101. If you distrust the bridge, you would rather turn around, turn to 45. Okay, we're going to cross the bridge, um, 101. Turn to 101, rather. Uh, the bridge is old but in good repair. If you choose to travel north, turn to 350. If you'd rather go south, turn to 118. We're going to go south and turn to 118.
You can see that ahead of you, other paths join yours in a small clearing. You are in clearing 13. If you have been here before, turn to 303. If you have not been here before, keep reading. You feel a prickling sensation around your brass ring. Looking down, you see dozens of small scorpions scuttling towards you. Test your luck. If you're lucky, turn to 70. If you're unlucky, turn to 182. Okay, test our luck. How, much, how many luck points do we have? 11. That's quite good. Okay, roll two dice. This has to be less than or equal to my current luck score. And it is. Uh, only just, though. Although, uh, we have to lose a luck point, of course. So we're down to 10 now. Um, okay, we're lucky to turn to 70. Your reactions are quick. You have time to decide how to deal with the scorpions. Will you s stamp on them and strike them with your sword? Or stamp on them and strike with your sword, rather. Turn to 216. Cast a fire spell, turn to 110. Or leap over them to safety, turn to 277. Uh, we're going to leap over them to safety, uh, 277. Roll two dice. If the total is less than or equal to your stamina, you jump over them. If the total is greater than your stamina, you do not leap quite far enough and you are stung. Lose three points of stamina. If you are still alive, turn to 319. Okay, we're pretty much guaranteed because we have 24 stamina points, but I'll do the formality. Okay, that's less than or equal to my current stamina score, so we pass that. Um, um, Anyway, 319. There's only one option, isn't there? Hurriedly, you choose an exit. Will you go north, turn to 138, east, turn to 47, or west, turn to 66? We are going to go east and turn to 47. Should be able to get this book, or rather this adventure done in this video. You come upon a small overgrown clearing. Um, you are in clearing three. You look around, but you see nothing. There are three exits. Will you go south, turn to 290, east, turn to 31, or west, turn to 118? We're going to go east and turn to 31. As you walk along, you sense that you are far to the east of the point where you entered the swamp. You wonder if you have taken the right paths. Suddenly, you step into a grassy glade. This is clearing 21. If you've been here before, turn to 364. If not, keep reading. There is a crystalline pool in the middle of the clearing with an inviting sandy beach to one side. There are no other paths leading out. Will you leave and go back to the west, turn to 47? Watch a while for danger, turn to 394, or drink from the pool, turn to 77. Okay, we're going to drink from the pool and turn to 77. You feel revitalised. The water in the pool has healing properties. Regain three stamina points. You leave and go back to the west. Turn to 47. Okay, I don't need to do that. I have maximum stamina. Uh, yep, this again. So... Um, we're in clearing three again. But this time we're going to go to the south. Turn to 290. Um, yeah, 290. Uh, you can see signs that others have walked this way recently. Um, ahead is another clearing. This is clearing 26. If you have been here before, keep reading. Um, if you've been here before, turn to 323. If you have not been here before, keep reading. Um, as you enter the clearing, an arrow whizzes past your head. You see three mangy-looking swamp orcs armed with bows. The other two let their arrows fly. If you have the golden magnet charm, turn to 83. If you do not have it, turn to 151. Okay, we don't have it anymore because we traded it, so 151. Uh, you dodge to the side. One arrow misses you. The other nicks your arm. Um, lose one skill point. So, another skill point gone. That's down to seven. Um, will you attack with your sword? Turn to 281. Use a magic spell. Turn to 399. Or run for your life. Turn to 309. We're going to run for our life. Our life, whatever. 309. You have a choice of three exits from this clearing. Will you go north? Turn to 47. South? Turn to 53. West? Turn to 388. We're going to go west and turn to 388. Lots of places to lose skill in this uh, game, isn't there? 
After a short walk, you enter a pleasant, grassy uh, clearing. You see two other exits. This is clearing 24. If you've been here before, turn to 263. If you've not been here before, keep reading. You stand still for a moment, looking around you. Then you realise that there is something strange about the grass. It is growing up around you so fast, you can see the movement. As you watch, you see nippers form at the end of the stalks. They snap at you. You are in the middle of a patch of crab grass. If you attack it with your sword, turn to 134. If you want to use magic, turn to 167. Okay, uh, we're going to attack it with our sword, 134. Okay, you hack at the crab grass with your sword. The nippers are easy to cut down, but more keep growing up around you. Fight the hungry lawn as though it were a single opponent. Crab grass skills, 6 stamina, 16. If you escape, turn to 187. Yeah, I'm going to escape now, so let's just lose the two stamina points and then escape don't need to write down the, uh, the statistics of uh, the crabgrass. Uh, 187. Okay, 187. There are three exits from the clearing. Will you go south, turn to 144, east, turn to 290, or west, turn to 10? We're going to go south, turn to 144. Uh, you notice that your path is crisscrossed by spider webs. There is a clearing ahead. Even before you enter it, you can see that the surrounding trees are thickly festooned with webs and that there are many spiders here. You are in clearing 17. If you have been here before, turn to 345. If you have not been here before, keep reading. In the centre of the clearing, there is a sumptuous pavilion which seems to float above the marshy ground. It is silver grey and it shimmers like woven spider silk. Seated in the pavilion is a tall man. His thick beard and eyebrows are white and his robe is as silver grey as his tent. Around his neck hangs a gleaming silver spider amulet. You uh, you know that you are in the presence of the Master of Spiders. As he regards you from his burning green eyes, you feel your brass ring warning you of evil. Will you cast a magic spell, turn to 74, attack immediately, turn to 26, or talk to him in a friendly fashion, turn to 332? And there he is. Okay, we are going to cast a magic spell, so turn to 74. You decide to uh, you decide to combat the evil master of spiders with a spell. Which one will you use? Friendship, turn to 261. Curse, turn to 261. Fire, turn to 113. None of these, turn to 144 and choose again. Okay, it's going to be a fire spell. So let's use one. So we have one fire spell left, and let's turn to 113. It occurs to you that the uh, that spider webs are uh, are very inflammable. You cast the uh, you cast the fire spell on the master of spiders. Instantly, his robes catch fire. He screams horribly and falls to the ground. The flame spreads throughout the clearing. Sheets of fire rush up the trees, incinerating the foul creatures that lurk there. The heat is so intense that you abandon any idea of collecting loot. Your only thought is to escape. You lo you lose three stamina points due to burns as you rush from the clearing. I won't comment on the spelling mistake again. Okay, so we're down to 19 stamina points because we loosed them. Um, and turn to 165. Uh, there are only two exits from this clearing. If you go north, turn to 388. If you go south, turn to 105. Look at that, look. He's actually underlined the paragraph number. Imagine that that's the only way that you'd know that's that, well, that's the paragraph you were on, so you have to go through the whole book and look for the underlined one. It's a bit stupid. Um, anyway, north, turn to 388, south, 105. Okay, we're going to go south, turn to 105. Ahead of you is a clearing. Unlike the last one you found, the ground seems to be solid. This is clearing 12. If you have been here before, turn to 330. If you have not been here before, keep reading. You see several large flat stones, a huge hollow tree and two other paths leading out. Will you sit down and rest on a stone, turn to 21, investigate the hollow tree, turn to 55, or leave the clearing immediately and turn to 390? And there's the tree in question. Very cosy. Um, we're going to rest on a stone, um, turn to 21. You, uh, you relax for a few minutes, regain one stamina point. Puts me up to 20. Um, then you hear a waffling sound coming from the tree. If you want to see who or what is in the tree, turn to 55. If, if you'd rather not know, turn to 390. Um, you don't want to know, so 390. 
rather we don't want to know. 290. You have a choice of three paths. They all seem rather swampy and hazardous. Would you go north, turn to 144, east, turn to 209, or west, turn to 195? Okay, let's go west, 195. You are in clearing one. Actually, this is no more than a wide spot where three trails meet. The ground is very shaky and wet, and huge insects flit over the pools of water that dot the ground. If you want to step carefully across to another trail, turn to 58. If you do either, just jump over the, the soft part, turn to 91. Okay, we're going to jump over the soft part, turn to 91. Roll two dice. If the result is equal to or less than your stamina, you made the jump. Otherwise, you fell short, caught your leg in the mire, and twisted your arm slightly when you landed. Subtract one point from your skill. You may now leave the clearing. Would you travel west, turn to 298, east, turn to 105, or south, turn to 208? Okay, let's deal with that thing. For stamina, less than or equal to 20. It's guaranteed. Yeah, so we've got two. That's quite good. Uh, that's one in 36 chance. Um, what would that be? That would be... One in twenty five is not point naught four. And one in fifty would be not point naught two. So it must be something like not point naught three. Yeah. Okay, anyway, um anyway, which way are we going? Um We're going to go south ten to two hundred and eight. I have to find out what one out of thirty-six is a decimal, is now. Yeah, almost. It's not point naught two seven recurring, so not point naught two seven 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 seven, which is nearly not point naught three rounded up. So I was right, it's about not point naught three. Anyway, that was quite good. I'm pleased with that. Anyway, what are we doing? Can't remember where I was now. Um, yeah, it must have been 208, mustn't it? It seems to become lighter as you walk along through the tr uh, through the trees above you. You suddenly catch a glimpse of blue sky. A few minutes later, you see an opening in the trees, and when you step through, you realise that you have left the swamp. If you are not ready to leave Scorpion Swamp, you may retrace your steps and walk back the way you came until you reach the first clearing, 10 to 195. If you are ready to return and report the outcome of your quest, turn to 159. Okay, so we are, so 159. Uh, you feel that you have done all you can. Now you must re return to your patron and report your success or your failure. Did you undertake your quest for Selator, 10 to 6, Grimslade, 10 to 226, or Poomchucker, 10 to 56? Okay, it was Poomchucker, wasn't it? So 56 we go. You make your way across the fields and along the winding roads towards the village marketplace. There stands the house. Uh, there stands the house of Poomchucker, just as you left it. Uh, you knock on the door, and the goblin girl admits you. She takes you to Poomchucker's library. There he sits, swathed in a silken robe. Well, how did it go? He booms. Did you bring me a map of the path to Willow Bend? If you reached Willow Bend in your travels, turn to 158. If you did not get to Willow Bend, turn to 8. Okay, we did reach Willow Bend, so. 158. I'll remember 8. I want to find out what happens if we didn't. 158. Okay, you smile broadly and pull a tattered piece of parchment out of your pocket. It is the map you faithfully kept of your journey. Clearly marked on it are the paths on which you travelled and clearings where you fought. Each hazard is indicated. As you explain it to Poomchucker, he is more and more delighted. Finally, he claps you on the back, and although you are strong, uh, you stagger. Wonderful! Uh, he says, perfect. He reaches into a drawer and brings out a huge emerald. Call it a bonus, he laughs. My first caravan will leave tomorrow. Uh, you will be my guest here for as long as you like, and half of my savings for a year are yours, just as I promised. You smile and thank him. 
You are pleased to find out that the mysterious Poonchaka is an honourable man. Maybe someday you will know him better, but for now, your quest is a success and your adventure is at an end. Okay, so we received a huge emerald and a half of his future e uh, earnings. Okay, brilliant. I'll just put the emerald on the thing. Why not? Okay, brilliant. So that's the end of that quest. That's Poonchaka's quest done. So we just had to reach... Um, Willow Bend and then return, and let's find out what happens if we uh, if we didn't reach there. Well, that's too bad, he sighs. I'll have to find someone else. If you have any of my magic gems left, I'll trade some healing potion for them. Will you attack? But this is... Uh, explain that you have used more. I'm going to remember this, 8. Let's see what happens if we go to 141. Trade your remaining spell gems for the potion, 141. The offer sounds reasonable to you. You reach into your pouch and take out the magical jewels that you did not use. He rings for the serving girl, and she brings a draught that refreshes you and heals your wounds. Your adventure is over. You did not succeed, but you learned a great deal, and maybe you will conquer the swamp some other day. Okay, brilliant. It's not too bad. Then if we go to trait, explain them, we've used them all. 316. Unfortunately, you have none of the magical gems left to trade. Too bad, he says. I would like to help you, but healing drafts are expensive, and I have already lost enough on this enterprise. If you'd like to leave now, turn to 100. If you're, if you're angry enough to attack Poomchaka, turn to 341. Let's see what happens if we leave first. Tired and battered, you leave Poomchaka's mansion and head for the inn. You did not succeed in your quest, but at least you escaped with your life. Perhaps you will return another day. For now, your adventure is over. Okay, so where do we have to go for the attacking? 341, wasn't it? Yeah, 341. This will be a laugh. Okay, <laughs> his casual attitude towards you after you risk your life on his mission is more than you can bear. Uh, you draw your sword and attack. He is surprised, but dodges your first blow, moving very nimbly for a man of his great bulk. He plucks a sword from behind his desk and defends himself well. You soon realise that he is a dangerous opponent. Poomjacker, skill 9, stamina 14. He, his back is to the door, so if you want to escape, you must dive out of the window. To do that, turn to 327. Otherwise, when you reduce Poomjacker's stamina to 6 or less, turn to 372. Let's see what happens if we go to... Um, 327, escape... 327. He is much more dangerous than you had guessed. Who would have thought that such a fat and funny-looking man could fight so well? You turn and dive out of the window, hoping to escape. Alas, a crowd has gathered below. Your fall knocks the breath from your body. Before you can recover, two burly guards have tied your hands behind your back. You will spend a long time in the dungeons for your treachery. Your adventure is over. Okay. I can't really see the point of this, really, because they all just lead to end. Uh, uh, they all just lead to a bad ending of the mission that you have to restart the mission anyway, or restart the adventure anyway. If you if you didn't reach Willow Bend, so can't really see the point of this. It's just sort of using up. Uh, it's probably just using up extra paragraphs that you had left over. Anyway, if we win or reduce them to f six or less uh, stamina, ten to three hundred and seventy-two. See what happens if we defeat him, which I don't think I'll be able to do in my current uh, in my current situation. To be honest, I only have seven skill, don't I? Because of the uh, all the all the skill losses I took. You know, 372. You hear sh uh, you hear shrieks from below. The goblin serving maid is calling for help. Guards! He is killing the master. Come quickly. While you are calculating your chances, a door bursts open behind Poomchucker, and three guards in red chain mail run into the room with crossbows at the ready. They do not wait for orders, but fire at you immediately. The darts pierce your chest, and you sink to the floor. Your adventure is over. Yeah, I can't see the point. I mean, all the... Uh, all the options, if you didn't get to Willow Bend, were just bad endings, really, apart from the few that said, you know, oh, well, I'll trade you a healing draft for your remaining gems. I mean, I can't really see the point of it, really. I mean, they, they should have just said, yeah, you didn't reach Willow Bend, so bad luck, your adventure is over, maybe try again. You know, I, I, I think he was just using up more, uh, yeah, using up some extra paragraphs he had at the end, really. 
Anyway, so that's that. Anyway, so that's the end of um, Poom Chucker's adventure. Um, in the next video, I'll make a start to uh, uh, the evil adventure, which is uh, um, Grim Slade. So see see where that takes me. Um, what I would like to do though is I'm really sick of going past that scorpion and not seeing what happens if if we defend the uh, the dwarf. Yeah, let's go to 312. What happens if we actually try to defend the dwarf from the horrible scorpion? Right. If you kill the scorpion, go to 324. Okay. Monster is dead. You look at the dwarf. He does not seem to be breathing. Will you leave the clearing immediately? Search the body. Use a bless spell on the dwarf. Well, let's see. What, 42 or 383. Let's go to 383 first. Then go to 42 after. 383. Hoping to save the dwarf. Blah blah blah. His eyelids flutter, and for a moment you think you have succeeded, but this is not a powerful enough spell to bring someone back from the dead. Turn to 324 and make another choice. Okay, so he really is dead. There's nothing more we can do about that. Uh, 42 to search his body. So he, he's dead either way, really. You look through the big belongings of the unfortunate dwarf to see if there's anything that you can use. His armour, of course, is too small for you, but in his pouch you find a small vial of potion. If you drink it, turn to 253. Go on then. 153. You drink the potion, immediately you, f you begin to feel very strange. It was a potion to make you handsome, but it was designed for dwarfs. For the next hour you will be somewhat shorter and stockier than usual, and your nose will be very big. After that the effects will wear off. Um, next hour. Reduce your skill by one for your next combat only. It's end of 88. Uh, so the dwarf and everything to do with him is completely useless. So. There's no point in her uh, rescuing the dwarf or having anything to do with him, really. Trying to kill the scorpion or whatever. You can't even heal him. Anyway, so that's that. Thank you for watching. Next video we'll have um, Grim Slade's evil adventure. So, hope you can join me then, and goodbye.